Hello everybody, welcome back to Zombie Zoology. I'm Zombie Zebra and today I'm doing a Q&A. So I went on my Facebook page and asked you guys to leave me some questions. Um, my first Facebook question, and this shows how cool I am, is from my mom. And she asked, who is your favorite mom? To which I am contractually obligated to answer, my mom. Next question is uh, golden retrievers versus other breeds. Discuss. I myself am definitely a golden retriever girl. I grew up with two golden retrievers, one named Lacey, who is to my right over here, and one named Loper at my feet to my left. Uh, they are both wonderful, amazing. I think the temperament of goldens is great, but the breed doesn't make the dog, so you know, you just gotta go with whoever you bond with. I definitely say adopt, don't shop all the time because you gotta save those shelter dogs. Next question is also dog related. Uh, discuss how awesome pit bulls are and how anyone who says they're dangerous is just misinformed. And I also feel very strongly about this. I think there's a lot of misinformation out there about pit bulls. The thing that annoys me most is that all flat-headed dogs these days are being labeled as pit bulls when the actual type of pit bull that has been bred to be aggressive is like the strict, pure American pit bull. Even an American pit bull terrier that was bred to be aggressive their environment is probably going to have more to do with that than their breed type. Uh, and number two, most of these things being labeled pit bulls aren't even the type of pit bull that is bred to be aggressive. So it just, it makes no sense. I get so distressed over it. Um, I think pit bulls are awesome. Uh, when I move out and I'm on my own, I want to get some kind of like pit bull, like misunderstood type dog, just because that's the kind of person I am. I want to get some rescue that's had a tough time so we can have had tough times together what's one of the most frustrating aspects of eds that has to do with other people and not necessarily eds itself i love this question because there are lots of things about eds that are frustrating one thing that it both has to do with eds and with other people is it's really hard to look able-bodied and not be able-bodied because Understandably so, when people look at me, they assume I'm fine, unless I'm using my cane. On days when I need it, I get treated so differently by the entire world. Like people offer me seats, and like people are nice to me, people hold open doors for me, people just give me all the kind of like access and help that I could really use on any given day. It's just people don't know to give it. And that's not necessarily other people's faults, because you know, you don't know unless you know. But even people who know me, like it's not on the top of their mind unless I have some sort of like visual representation of it out with me, like unless I'm wearing a particular brace or have my cane. Otherwise, people tend to kind of forget and they assume I'm like everyone else. Um, so that, that's always frustrating. Uh, and the next question uh, is, what can other people do to be better friends to those who are managing EDS? And my answer to that is very simply, keep asking questions like that. That is such a sweet, insightful, kind question to ask somebody. If, you're have, if you have friends who are struggling um, with anything, uh, physical or otherwise, a great question to always ask is, what can I do to be a better friend? How can I be better? And that kind of communication is gonna be your first step to developing a more healthy two-sided relationship. Uh, for specifically EDS, I would say, acts of service. Uh, I know for myself, as far as the love languages go, before I was diagnosed with EDS and had my spinal surgery, my number one love language was physical touch. And after my spinal surgery, it changed to acts of service. And I think that's something a lot of disabled people might be able to relate to. Uh, because when your own physical activity is so limited, other people contributing their own physical activity to your success is very, very meaningful because it's such a limited resource to us. I got a couple questions all in one here next, so I'm gonna read it all and then I'll break it down question by question. Uh, number one is what braces have you found the most helpful for you? Uh, number two, what is your medical team? Like what kind of specialists do I go to, etc.? cetera? Um, and what is your advice to somebody, especially young adults who just discovered EDS and think they may have it? So what braces have you found the most helpful to you? Well, I'm very lucky in that I myself do not suffer too many dislocations. If I do suffer something like that, it's typically a subluxation, so I don't have to wear too many braces day to day to be okay. Obviously, my OG brace is my big cream mint neck brace that I had to wear for a semester of school after my spinal surgery, but I don't have to wear that anymore, luckily. I kept the neck part around for my particularly bad days, but I haven't used that in months, I don't think. 
Uh, I have found a couple shoulder braces that have helped with my posture, but I've yet to find one that is like fitted right to me. They're always a little too big or a little too small, so it kind of makes the problem worse. I've found with braces, at least for myself, I have a hard time with just like generic drugstore braces because if they don't fit exactly right, they tend to make the problem worse. Um, I tried finger splints for a while, uh, but I found they were digging too much into my skin because like when it was resisting the joint, it was just digging into my skin. So I don't make too much use of those. I definitely would if I wrote more. So that's gonna be my advice here. If you are in school or in a job where you have to write a lot, I would look into ring splints. You can get ring splints that are plastic off of Amazon. You can, um, Loper, stop that. Okay, I'm taking this and I'm putting it right up here. He's not gonna play with us for a while, okay? You're gonna be okay. You can play with that acorn. Hey, 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 rude, rude. Okay, sorry guys, dog intermission. Always fun filming with dogs in the house. So yes, that would be my advice, is look into ring splints if you are in any sort of job or school that requires a lot of writing. What is your medical team like? What do you, specialists do you go to, etc.? So my medical team now and my medical team when I first got diagnosed look a little bit different. I definitely recommend that when you first get diagnosed you see kind of every specialist related to EDS because you don't know what you're dealing with. Essentially when you get diagnosed with EDS you are told a part of the foundation of your body is not solid. So you are built on rocky foundation. You're gonna need to figure out what all has, the damage has been caused in the rest of the house now because of this rocky foundation. It's not a diagnosis of everything wrong in your body. It's a diagnosis of where all the wrong things come from. So then you have to kind of start the treasure hunt of like, okay, well, is something wrong in this system? Like, is this system working correctly? When you first get diagnosed, Definitely whoever diagnoses you will probably have some suggestions about who to see, all that good stuff. Um, I myself found a Facebook group for people specifically in my city, and they actually keep a list of doctors in the area familiar with EDS. So I basically had them send me the list and like picked one from every category and was like, let's go, let's get this done. So I got the full workup done. I saw um, a neurologist, a neurosurgeon for my Chiari malformation, which I did get diagnosed with a Chiari malformation, but it was decided not to be a candidate for surgery. Um, I saw a cardiologist, which I definitely recommend. Uh, I also see what I think has been kind of the diamond in the rough for me has been my pain management slash psychiatrist. I go to a doctor that is both pain management and psychiatry, which is a great combination because pain and depression and anxiety intermingle quite a bit. Obviously pain can cause depression and anxiety, but also the way your head works can lead to more pain. That's not to say that the, the pain is in your head, but just you, the way you perceive the pain can heighten the pain itself. So having somebody who plays with both sides of it really, really helps me out. Uh, so I think, I think that's all of them. Oh, also a gastroenterologist. If you have any sort of digestion problems, even if you don't, but for some reason you throw up all the time, which is the situation I was in, which I guess that is a digestion problem now that I mention it. But uh, if you're in that situation, a gastroenterologist is going to be the one you're going to want to see. And also, I mean, ladies, an OBGYN is also very important. I recommend you see someone familiar with EDS because it affects stuff down there. I'm just telling it like it is. What is your advice for someone, especially young adults, who just discovered EDS and think they may have it? First, I would say if you have the means, I understand everyone doesn't, but if you have the means, please pursue a diagnosis. Uh, there, are, there are some situations in which I think self-diagnosis is completely valid, uh, but I think for EDS, it is such a dangerous disorder that if you suspect you have it, you really do need to take the step of getting diagnosed, if at all physically possible. Uh, so go see, I saw a geneticist when I first got diagnosed. I didn't list him on my specialty team because I only saw him once, it was just to get a diagnosis. Um, but he is the one who actually diagnosed me. Um, so I would definitely say, Go get diagnosed, first thing. Uh, but next, I would say don't panic. It, EDS is a degenerative disease, but it's not a losing battle, or at least not for everyone. Everyone's experience is gonna be different, and because of that, don't get too freaked out by watching any other one person's experience. Um, you are fighting your own battle, it is unique to you, and you have superpower strengths that are unique to you. So figure out what superpower you have and make that work for you because EDS, 
I, I feel fine saying it that EDS to me is a shortcoming. There are lots of ways in which it has helped me grow. It has made me a better person. I, and I have some cool party tricks, but I would definitely say it's a disadvantage. And with every disadvantage comes a superpower. So I recommend that you find your superpower and find a way to help it balance the scales. That's what I had to do. Thank you so much for sending in those questions if you sent in questions. Go ahead and like my Facebook page so that you know when I'm doing the next one of these. And if you have any questions, POTS, Kiari, EDS, anything, feel free to also leave them in the comments down below. Maybe I'll make a video about it. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. And until next time, hoard those spoons, guys.